Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bugbears and Brews. My name is Brian, and tonight we're doing Encounter Recap number 28 of the Storm King Thunder campaign. And since we're recording on a Friday evening, and it's been a while since I talked about a beer, I'm going to drink a beer during the recap. Sorry. Uh, this one here, before we get into the recap, is Right Brain Brewery. I've never heard of them, uh, but they are a brewery out of uh, Traverse City up north Michigan here. Uh, and this is Cakewalk. And Cakewalk is a uh, vanilla cream ale. I've never had a vanilla cream ale. I enjoy vanilla porters. Uh, and I enjoy cream ale, so why not mix them both? 4.5% uh, ABV from what I recall. And it has corn in it from what I read on the website. Um which is kind of interesting for a beer like this, but whatever. Nice little uh, creamy color there, or yellow color. Doesn't smell very vanilla-y. But you can definitely taste it. Um, really light, uh, you know, I think I'll be able to drink quite a bit of those tonight. Uh, you know, definitely a, a lighter beer which is part of the reason why I went with the cream ale. Um, vanilla, I wish, is a little bit stronger, but you know what? Because it is what it is. Maybe as I'm drinking more, it'll get better. I'm going to take one more swig here, then we'll get to recapping. Cheers. Uh, so this one here, I will start by saying it's good to get back to form. Um, me as a DM, I think I excel a bit more at the roleplay aspects than I do combat. Combat is fun and all, however... I have a lot more fun with story and role play. And so after having a couple sessions of very combat heavy situations, getting back into role playing, uh, you know, it, it just felt right. It felt good. Uh, so right after the battles ended, you guys were trying to press the elders to uh, go right ahead with the trial with Broomy and get, um, you know, get her eating that royal jelly and proving that she's the real princess. And the elders were like, whoa. We got buildings on fire here. People are still dying. Now is not the time. Let's take care of the people that are uh, on the verge of death first. And then from there, we can go ahead and branch out uh, and prep for the, um, the trial. So reluctantly, uh, you guys agreed. And thanks to your guys' efforts, you know, some people went and helped put out burning buildings. And some people went and tended the wounded and others. Uh, I don't recall if anybody put any dead or people that were dying out of their misery for the people that were definitely on the bad side. I don't recall that one, but for some reason that's sticking out in my mind, so maybe somebody mentioned it. Uh, but in the end, you guys were able to save a decent amount of the population to bring them up to 200 versus like the 125 that it was before. Go team, right? Um, so that's really nice there. And then you guys rested. You can hit up to your level 10. You guys are happy for level 10-ness. Uh, and, or no, you guys weren't level 10 yet, I lied. Uh, level 10 came a little bit later in the uh, this uh, session. So the next day, you guys, uh, you know, started. everybody started prepping for the trial. Uh, townsfolk were setting stuff up. Broomy was locked away with the elders, kind of learning what's going to have to happen. What she, you know, like, she has to say certain things. They're going to present everything in a certain way. And so she's kind of learning the ins and outs of this trial. Once again, you got to drink a beer. So she was getting prepped by the elders, uh, and you guys just kind of helped the town out, uh, you know, put up a couple uh, of fences or whatever, you know, just did did your daily routine uh, and well, along with helping out the town to burn the time up until the, uh, the event. Now, with the trial, it started off with, like, traditional song and dance, but it was all really muted tones. You could tell people's hearts weren't really in this, you know, they just lost half their population uh, and the people that are left, you know, half of them are hurt. So it was really down on the uh, the celebration there. So that went on and then the elders each came up and they gave a little speech and then Broomy came up and gave her speech and said her words about the, you know, the, the traditional words that you say during this undertaking and she said it all flawlessly, which was great. You know, she trained well, she studied well, and she didn't mess up. Uh, so the elders then got up the ritual jelly spoon, gave a big scoop, 
handed it to Broomy. Broomy said a couple additional words, uh, you know, the traditional words, and then took a bite, uh, and, you know, did the whole mouthful, chewed it up, and swallowed, and she just seemed like she was doing really well. She's happy. And then uh, you guys off at the distance, because you guys had about a 30 foot distance between you and Broomy. You guys were on a, a little, you know, front row seating. She was up on a dais there. And you can see that she's starting to get a little pale. And all of a sudden, she kind of starts grabbing her stomach and just acting a little weird. And she starts looking like she's about to throw up. Um, and then from there, she like drops her knees and falls back. And then, like, what the hell's going on here? Uh, Pavic, during all this, as he's grabbing his shield, he's grabbing his axe, he's ready to go ahead and uh, kill one of the, uh, the elders, whatever one he can get to first, he's going to go ahead and kill. Uh, luckily, he didn't come down to that. Because Broomy, uh, as the crowd is going silent and like, what the hell just happened here? She raises up a hand and, goes, ah! and starts laughing. Uh, essentially faked her own death and uh, played a prank on everybody. And that didn't go over so well. Um, not pe People weren't upset or yelling at her. But like the congratulation clap was really confused, concerned. Uh, but she survived the trial, and that proved that she is truly the Shadaharakai princess. You know, she's part of the royal bloodline there. That's great. Uh, from there, the party got much more lively, uh, you know, dancing and singing and all that kind of stuff. Was a much more upbeat now that, you know, this little six-year-old didn't die in this trial, and that they really did have this royal bloodline, uh, and you guys were a lot less tense because she did pass it. Uh, you know, there's a couple people at the table that were worried. I got to say, like, I knew what I was going to do with the whole faking the death thing when I went into this encounter. And I thought it was going to be really obvious, especially because I was, like, kind of chuckling a little bit as I'm describing everything. And, like, you guys were all intense on this. I don't know if it's just because this moment was so built up or, or what, but you guys seemed all intense and didn't realize what was going on. And then when I realized that, or I told you guys that, hey, she was faking her death, you guys all looked at me like I was uh, kind of a prick but uh, i thought it was fun and i'm really maybe you guys didn't know about it but to me i didn't think you guys knew about it uh but back to the party so everybody's uh enjoying themselves dancing having fun uh the first thing you guys do is you guys go up to broom and you say hey broomy uh that was funny but it wasn't cool to do so maybe be a little bit more sensitive to this tribe your, your tribe uh, be sensitive to their feelings concerning that they just lost half their people. Next order of business, as I'm drinking a beer, was a drinking contest between uh, Rondi with the help of Pavic against Ivar. So Ivar insists on having a drinking contest with people. Rondi agreed to it, and through sleight of hand checks, uh, he was able to pass off his beer every time and just pretend he's drinking and uh, we even had Ivar there casting spells and Ivar is a cleric and uh, or sorry Ivar is a paladin Pavic is a cleric and as they're doing this like he's casting spells that is in the paladin's wheelhouse in Ivar's wheelhouse and I'm like trying to give him an advantage on getting these uh Ooh, excuse me. Sorry about that. It's affected drinking the beer. Uh, giving them an advantage on uh, detecting the spells that's going on because there's verbal components, there's somatic components going on here. And even material, well, I think he's splashing the holy water uh, for Bless later on. Um, and Ivar just completely oblivious to it because of, uh, you know, just poor rules. So it wasn't even going to be anything hard. It was just, you know, get a, something above a 10. Didn't happen. So because of that, Rondi didn't even take a single drink. He passed it all off. Ivar wound up getting smashed. And that uh, him getting smashed led to Ivar attempting to do some acrobatic stuff. Uh, I think by uh, Pavic, I think, was the one, or maybe it's Thessalon, saying, hey, I bet you can't do this. And, uh, you know, he said, hey, hold my beer because we're the hold my beer table. Uh, and so he attempted to jump on a rail and then onto a chandelier and swing and land on a a, um, a table. And I gave him disadvantage because he was drunk and he rolled a nat 20 and a 2. 
So with the Nat 20, he did half of it really well, and then he failed at the end because it was with this advantage. So uh, at the end, he crashed and knocked himself out and passed out for the rest of the evening. Uh, while this was all going on, the elders, uh, they went and uh, seeked out Anigo and pulled him aside. Uh, you know, they had a drink in their elder hut. And they want to know what's going on with the Quadin because the uh, the party mentioned that they saw the Quadin. If uh, you don't remember the Quadin, those are the long snake type things with the wings and the little arms uh, that were like the tracers in the sky following you guys around. You guys mentioned you saw them, but the uh, the Shadahar Kai folks they haven't seen them since the royal family has been lost. So they thought them to be extinct, killed out with the royal family. So they're like, hey, where's the quad? And we haven't seen him since you guys came here. Do you know what's going on? You guys, you know, I, uh, Inigo was like, I don't know. I haven't seen him since then. I thought you guys had some sort of way of getting a hold of him. And the elders let, them, let you guys know, or let Inigo know that, you know, doing the the uh, ceremony kind of sends out a beacon to them. That way they all come around and join, but none of them came. So that's kind of a little mystery what's going on with the quad in there. Uh, and then they discussed where to go. So Anigo brought out a map, showed them what's up, and um, their ancestral home, uh, Crow's Crown, is now on your guys' map, Ruins. And you guys believe your map is more accurate than what they had, considering that they left that ancestral home 200 years ago when they were kicked out. And so they were a little sad to hear that, uh, but they still want to pursue going to that ancestral home and... Inigo, being the voice of the party, said, yeah, we're, we're going with you. Uh, first off, we want to make sure there's a smooth transition with Broomy, and we want to make sure she's getting into safe hands and getting into a good situation here. Uh, from there, you guys kind of wrapped up your evening, went back to your house that they gave you. For, I say house, but like your living quarters uh, for the night, and you heard something creeping out your window as you were getting ready to lay down. And Ronnie tossed out his uh, rope of entanglement at the target. And even with not seeing it and giving advantage on the, the save there, the target failed. And the target was actually Broomy sneaking into you, uh, your guys' house. And she let you guys know she's done playing princess. It was fun for a while, but now that she's a real princess, she doesn't want to do it. And doesn't want to stay with the Shadow Heart High people and that you guys are her family. And so... Uh, with that, you guys kind of were like, oh, what the hell? Uh, didn't see it coming. And you eventually got her into, she's willing to give it a shot and stay because you guys are going to be traveling with her for some time. Uh, but I believe there was a caveat that even if after all this she can still leave. I don't recall if that was the decision or not. Uh, but you guys were saying, you know, after spending time with your with the Shadow Harakai people, she'll become more... Uh, willing and understanding of them and uh, you know they'll become family too and then you know you guys will be able to leave uh, without causing a big rift there uh, so that's where that wrapped up and then you guys we moved on to some nighttime stuff here uh, some kind of dream sequences so we had a couple dream sequences with Broomy uh, so we kind of did from here on out we fast forwarded did a couple days as the party or as the town was all getting ready to leave because the entire town was leaving and going to the ancestral home that they had, they had the princess. So everybody's kind of getting ready over these uh, next couple of days here. Broomy's staying with you guys, and each night she's having dreams. And Thessalon's kind of purging into her mind, or uh, not purging, uh, burrowing into her mind and kind of finding, figuring out what she's dreaming of. And she had four different dreams that we looked in at. The first dream uh, was... Let's see here. The first dream was her getting transferred to Eleni post family massacre and then getting polymorphed into her current self now. Uh, the second dream was the murder of her family. Uh, and then the next two dreams were a bit more happier tones. Uh, one of them was like her playing with the quad, and in the second, the, the last one was like her earliest memories of her parents. She couldn't remember any of her parents' names or anything like that. You gotta remember. When she was taken, she was like three-ish. So that's where the you know, took off there, or ended off there. And then Broomy maintained that knowledge. And as each of these times she went through and she had these nightmares or these dreams, she re 
she kept those memories. So she kind of knows what's going on. Her memory's restored now. We don't have to worry about shattered memory or anything like that. Uh, Ivar also had some dreams, and his dreams involved the demon, devil, uh, Eleni hybrid mix thing that you guys fought. And the first one, uh, she, the devil demon chick was trying to get Ivar to embrace her. The second one, uh, she, they were kind of flirting at a bar. She sent him a drink and then any interest or any chances that Ivar took to get her to notice him uh, just didn't work. The third one, they were riding into battle together and then it cut to where Ivar was cut down and then getting ready to uh, get killed by somebody and the devil demon Eleni chick saved him and then, you know, struck, you know, stretched out her hand and said, you know, come with me and we can, we can end all this. And he reluctantly grabbed her hand and the next dream was them absolutely massacring a battlefield side by side and just, uh, you know, kicking ass and taking names essentially. Uh, that'll come into play on Ivar's character. That was a request on something he wanted to do with his character. Uh, I'm not going to go into much more than that because... It's up to him if he wants to reveal it to the party. Uh, from there, you guys got ready, set out. The town kind of took apart the houses because you got to remember this is kind of like a ramshackle type uh, piecemeal patchwork establishment. So everybody was taking apart their houses, building building wagons, carriages, and so on. Oh, uh, Grimak during this time also did check out on Britches. Britches is kicking ass. He had a couple battle wounds, but he's alive and doing well. Um, for the heading out part, Broomy had a nice carriage put together. Uh, during the day, she rides in the carriage uh, with the uh, the elders, kind of learning the culture, learning the history, learning lessons, getting lessons, you could say. Evening, she's hanging out with you guys, getting uh, some weapon uh, training and whatnot, because now that she's princess, she has to be able to protect herself, right? Uh, and then also during this, as you guys were getting ready to set out, uh, Ivar casted a fine steed spell, and he wound up getting an almost owl bear. It looked very much like an owl bear, but instead of having like feathery owl ears, it had ram's horns, and then it had kind of a reddish glow to its eyes. So mostly owl bear, but somewhat altered. Um, also on the road, Ivar uh, got some survival skills from the. The head people leading you, you through the desert, and they said for as far as traveling the desert in um, the Shadowfell, you always want to do it at night. And first off, it's a lot cooler, so that could probably apply no matter where you're at. Uh, second off, distances change based on the time of day. So, you know, Ivar hanging out there, you guys now have somebody that can help navigate the wilds uh, if you ever aren't with 200 some odd folks. Uh, and because of that group, you guys didn't get any random encounters or anything like that. Any sort of wildlife that you saw quickly went away. Nobody wanted to mess with 200 you know, people. Even the centaurs you saw off out in the distance, uh, they quickly kind of turned and went a different direction. Uh, from there, you guys, uh, we ended up the last bit of the session at a crossroads. Or not a crossroads. Uh, finishing up the desert. That took, the desert took five days. And then we ended up at a, uh, a river. A river parting the, um, like, in between two hillish areas. So there's, like, a nice little plains, two hillish areas, and then a river. Uh, nowhere on the map does it show, like, a bridge or a fjord or anything like that. So it's just a matter of figuring out what to do on that. Uh, luckily, because none of the players remembered, I did an intelligence roll throughout. And Thessalon was the only one to pass the intelligence roll. And... He remembers Fizzletink specifically telling him to be very careful crossing rivers in the Shadowfell. So uh, what you guys decide to do with that information is up to you. Uh, and that's where we're left off on the session. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed a lot of fun. I think everybody else had a lot of fun uh, with this session. I, you know, Getting back into roleplay stuff, it's really what I enjoy. So uh, much better. I'm sorry for the sad sap of a recap that the last one was. Hopefully this one was a bit better. Uh, looking forward to talking to you guys on Wednesday. A little bit more about the beer here. Still not picking up a whole lot of vanilla. Really easy to drink, though. Uh, I guess if you haven't had a cream ale, it's worth checking out. It's not too far off of a 
basic cream ale, like a cream ale without vanilla. A little bit uh, less on the hoppy side, not that cream ales are very hoppy to begin with. Um, for the price points, I think this was 10 bucks for a six pack. It's all right. I'm not upset by it, but it's nothing special. I really wish the vanilla was kicked up a little bit. That would have made me a bit happier. Uh, I don't know if I'd buy it again. I'd drink it if somebody had it around, but I don't think I'd actually go to the store and buy this one again. Uh, you know, if there's a cream ale out there, I'll go with a different one over this one. I'll go with the standard cream ale versus this one. Not unless If this one was the cheaper of the two, I would do it. Um, but... If it came down to two cream ales and one was a buck cheaper than this one, I wouldn't spend the extra dollar because you're not going to get the the vanilla flavor that it's telling you that you're going to pick up at. It's not even like it has the bottle actually smells a bit more vanilla than that. Maybe I'll try drinking the next one out of the bottle just to see if you know you kind of get a lot of the uh, what you smell impacts what you taste. So maybe I'll try the next one out of the bottle and see if it makes a difference. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, I liked doing the recap with the beer again. And so I think if I ever record on Fridays, um, mainly I record on Monday nights and I don't drink a beer on Monday nights, but if I'm going to record on a Friday and I'm going to be drinking a beer anyway, maybe I'll do a, a combine the beer and the uh, recap officially making it the Bugbears and Brews. I don't know if I actually ever combined the two. I know I was recorded one after another, but this is the official like combining a session recap with a beer talk. So talk to you later, guys. Had fun. Bye.